to admit the truth? That it was my addiction for Roger that caused it all. It's what caused me to lose you and Meg. And I know that now. Time to go. I'm ready. I don't want you to stay. You can go now. I'm going to be all right. And take good care of my little girl. If you could let her know that I... that I always loved her. I love her. But this is what I need to do. This is the price I have to pay. This is my punishment. You did the right thing. No, I did. DeMarco? No, Annie, I should say. What are you doing here? First day on the job, well, it's not really a job. Community service, court ordered. That's why I'm wearing this ridiculous outfit. <laughs> kind of silly, huh? All those years of training to get my RN degree, and now I'm handing out magazines and candy bars. Look, I... Like I said, I didn't really know until I got here today that I was going to be working the psych ward. Thank God it's only going to be for a week. They must have thought you'd feel right at home. As I said, this wasn't really planned. But I was walking by your room and I remembered something. What's that? You have something I want, Holly. Hi! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you could come visit with me. Ugh. Cassie, he is getting so big. I know, I'm getting a workout just carrying this little guy. You no. are. Can I get you guys anything? Can I get you some tea? Some juice? No, some we brought our own okay. juice and I brought some water for myself. Thanks. Good. So, we're still... He's working, you know. Good. I mean, good, because I just wanted to spend some time with you. Girl talk, that kind of good. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let me... I knew you were going to bring this up. Look, I know Reva and Josh are upset about the company, but Philip is really just trying to do the right thing. And he's my husband, you know? And they're your family, and you're my friend. So you see how I'm kind of caught here? I'd like to be... I'd like to be out of this. I'd like to be neutral. I'd like to be Switzerland. Okay. If I could. Here's to Switzerland. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> You expecting someone? No, not really. No. Why are you strangling that napkin? Why are you dressed up? All right, I'll uh, I'll give you three guesses. She's blonde. She's <laughs> neurotic, and she used to be married to my husband. Hmm. Well, the first two sound like me. No. But what's Beth done now? <laughs> <laughs> she took uh, Susan shopping. Well, how dare her? That's a cause for capital punishment, huh? <laughs> this is bothering you. I hate it. But I hate myself that I hate it. <laughs> and I hate more that Beth is loving it. <laughs> what do you mean? What's going on? Well, you know when she first came back to town and she couldn't stand when I would spend any time with Lizzie? Yeah, I remember. You remember that? You remember that? Yeah. Remember that time that I tried to take Lizzie ice skating and she practically had a cow? Do you remember that? Well, Susan tells me that she can't go shopping with me because Beth planned a little outing excursion with her and Lizzie. Harley. No, no, no. I've been thinking about this. Cassie, I've been thinking about this, and the more I think about it, the more it burns me up. Beth is doing this deliberately. I don't get it, Susan. It was your idea for us to go out shopping with my mom. Why couldn't I tell Harley? Because it will only make her jealous. Jealous? Yeah, that I'm spending more time with your mom than I am with Harley. I don't know. Well, I do. Look, your mom and Harley aren't exactly best buds. But my mom's gotten better, I Look, swear. I went along with your plan about getting our parents together. Now just go along with this, okay? Just go along whatever I say today, okay? We're sisters, right? Yeah. Okay, everything's under control at the office, so you guys ready to hit the mall? Hmm? Ready. Totally. Great. Um, Beth, do you know where the bathroom is? Yeah, yeah, it's it's right through that door. Susan, are, are you all... All right? So who is the best girl in the whole wide world, huh? 
You are. You are my one. Come on, my little pickle. Let's put you in here and see if you just drift off and take a little nap, okay? Want to? Why don't you give it a whirl? Oh. So pretty out with all the snow, isn't it? So clean and so fresh, just beautiful, brand new, fresh start. That's what I need, a fresh start. <laughs> sure was nice of Ed to say that I could just come and use his cabin whenever I needed it. <sighs> Won't stay too long, just to figure out where's the best place for me and my girl to go. What you doing, pumpkin pie? Not sleepy yet, huh? I have mail. Matt. <laughs> you dog, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi. Excuse me. In just a sec. So, anyway, like I said, hanging out with you was really cool. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is, this is kind of important. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, yeah, just a minute, okay? Nothing, it's just a customer. Hey, listen, there's a rave this weekend at the Look, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking for someone, and I think that they might be somewhere in this area. <laughs> and it's the, I, I have a picture yeah. of her, if you could, um, if you could yeah, just... Yeah, Friday's good. If you could just take a look, it would really help out a lot. Well, my shift ends at 5, so if you want to come over and... Hey! Could you just tell me if you know this woman? Look at it. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. Look, I guess I'm just a little edgy. I've been, I've been traveling all night in the ice and snow, and I just, I just, this is my wife, and I just need to find her and tell her that there's been a, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Yes. Yeah, it, it's 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 very complicated. It's it's difficult to go in. To look. Um, all right. We agreed that we would meet someplace to work on our marriage. If we thought our marriage was worth fixing, we would meet in this place at eight o'clock. Well, I I thought eight a.m. and she thought eight p.m. and we missed each other, and and she got hurt and upset and she left with our our little baby girl, m my little daughter Maureen, and um, I I I just need you to help me. So please, if you have seen her, please. Yeah, I've seen her. He's a man bent on revenge. The war is far from over. Terrorizing one woman. He's gonna come after me and he's gonna kill me. And driving another to the brink. You tricked me, you're not a doctor. Now nah, will he get away with it? You're very sick and I want to end the suffering. No, no! As the world turns on CBS, the number one daytime network. Good morning, Vicky. So what can I do for you? You're a little vague on the phone. I went out on a limb. I trusted you, and you used me. You said you wanted Alan to back off Lewis Oil. You said that, that the poor Lewises had suffered enough at the hands of your father and Annie all right, Dutton. All right, all right, That's all right. Calm down, calm down. So this is about the information that you gave me? You're damn right. Okay. I gave you the leverage to make Alan back off the Lewises, and now you're running Lewis Oil? Tell me, tell me how that's better for anyone except you, Philip. I'm sorry to hear about you and Ross. Yeah, well, these things happen, I'm sure you know. I don't blame you for being angry. I blamed you for everything that happened to my mother. Of course, then I saw the look on her face when you walked into the hearing and... Well, because of what you said, she's, she's gonna get help. And she's not going to go to jail, so... I think now that you're staying in Springfield, it's... I think it's going to be okay. Blake, that's what I want to talk to you about. What? When Ross tracked me down, he tried to prepare me for just how bad things had gotten for your mother. I didn't expect them to be this bad. 
Well, that's what happens when your husband and daughter vanish one day. That's my point. What are you trying to tell me, Fletcher? My leaving caused your mother to do some terrible things. And I don't want my staying to make it worse. I have nothing of yours, Annie. In fact, you may be the only person in the whole town whose life I didn't disrupt in some horrible way. I know that. So why did you say that? I'm not accusing you of stealing anything from me, Holly. I simply said you have something that I want. Besides that, you owe me. I owe you? Didn't you turn me in? <sighs> no, actually, I think I saved you from yourself. If you'd gone any further, if you'd hurt those children in, in any way, God only knows where they would have sent you or what they would have done to you, for that matter. OK, what, what do I have that you could possibly want? After everything you did to those people, all the people in Springfield stalking them and, and threatening them, invading their homes, kidnapping their children, and still, they showed up at your hearing and they stood up for you. They offered you forgiveness. Well, you know, I didn't ask for that. It doesn't matter. They still forgave you, Holly. They would rather die than give that to me. I want to know what it is about you that, that made them do that. What is it that you have that I don't? Cassie, I'm telling you, I know what's going on here, okay? I know Beth better than you do. Harley, what? Maybe, just maybe, you're making something out of nothing, do you think? Now, listen, don't you think that Beth still resents me just a little bit because of Philip? Well, yeah, she probably does. Probably, probably. <laughs> I can't believe you're siding with her. I'm not the you're the first person who knows about evil exes. You can't compare Beth with what Dinah's done. You can't do that. All right, I take that back. Listen, I'm not saying that things aren't complicated. I'm not saying that Beth doesn't still have feelings for Philip. I mean, they were married, they were high school uh -huh. sweethearts. There's a lot of history there. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that at all. But from what I see, she's kind of moved on to someone who I think is a really nice guy. Yeah, somebody who just happens to be Susan's father. Yes, yes, I know that that, that boy, that just stinks. And I know, I agree with you, but you saw them together, I saw them together, and he deserves to be happy. He really deserves to be happy. And if it's Beth, what are we gonna do? What can you do? Cassie Lane, siding with the opposition. I am not. I'm just kidding. I am not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know what you're saying, and, and you know what? I, I, maybe you're right. I am. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, maybe my imagination is taking off a little bit here. I'm pregnant. I'm allowed to get a little nuts when I'm pregnant, yes, aren't I? Yes, you are. It's in the book. You are allowed. Yeah. So then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be at all too crazy for me if I just stopped by Towers for a little bit, would it? Towers? I mean Towers. Because that's where Susan said they were going before they were going to go shopping. Harley, that's not a good idea. Come on, let's go. Oh. Well, wait. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Well, hello, ladies. Hi, Mr. Hi. LeMay. Hi, Lizzie. This is a nice surprise. Yeah. You know, I was hoping I'd find you here. I heard you guys were coming here before your big shopping spree, so uh, I decided to splurge for late lunch myself. Hmm, that's nice. Where's Susie? In the ladies' room. Ah. So, um, are you having lunch by yourself? Yes, I'm flying solo. Thank you very much. See, that way I don't have to hide a big crib sheet under the table in case a conversation lags. <laughs> and I have to tell you, that's probably one of the most charming things any guy's ever done for me on a date. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing here? <laughs> Hi, babe. Good to see you, too. Hi, um, I need to talk to Beth. Is everything okay, Susan? Uh, yeah, I just need to talk to Beth. Okay. Hey, 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 wait, wait. Are you all right? Yeah, I just can't talk to my dad about this. You know, um, a guy wouldn't understand. Uh-oh. I got it. Come on. No. I don't care. 
I'm not gonna look because we've said everything that we have to say over and over and over again and I found out all I need to know when you left me cooling my heels at the towers and showed up later half drunk with Beth. That's it. I don't want to go through it anymore. You've, you've seen her? Yeah. She comes in here sometimes to get gas with a baby. A, a baby? Well, that, that would be my daughter. That would be Maureen. <laughs> Cute kid. Yeah, your wife bought a whole new set of snow tires. She seems really nice. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, she is. You don't seem like the kind of guy I'd picture her with. <laughs> well, I've, I've, um, I've heard that before. <laughs> this is so romantic. You don't have any idea where she is, do you, or where she might have gone? Actually, I had to go out there. You had, you had to go out there? Mm-hmm. Her battery went dead. It's only like 10 miles away from here. It's back in the woods, a little bit tricky to find in the snow. Here, I'll show you. Okay, you go back out onto Route 5. Route 5, okay. And then you hang a left at the next stop sign. All right, and then it's about seven or eight more miles. This is the old Bower Cabin. Bower Cabin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> We will continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. I think Susan's really nice. Yeah, she is. We get along really well. And you know, some people even mistake us for real sisters. And I think it's really great that she's so close to my mom, don't you? Yeah, it is great, Lizzie. You okay? I know that you're probably feeling a lot of things right now. But the last thing that you should feel is embarrassed. Because this is this is a great thing. It's, it's an exciting thing. It is. Yes. It just means that you're becoming a woman. Ooh, really? <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time that it happened to me. I was I was at a dance recital. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a bummer. Yeah, there he was all dressed up in this dance costume, getting ready to perform in a ballet. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> and I was the first one of my friends that it happened to, so nobody knew what to say. But eventually it happened to everyone. Just like it happened to me, and now it's happened to you, and, and Lizzie, too, someday it happened to her. It's just part of becoming a woman. Yeah, I guess. Sweetie, um, did your mom ever talk to you about getting your period? Well, my mom, she was sick for a long time, and my, um, well, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish that my mom was there that day at the dance recital, but she wasn't. Uh, she, she had to work a lot, so I was pretty much on my own. Well, this makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> but, um, ugh, I have one question. Sure. Anything. Anything, sweetie. Why is it called a period? <laughs> uh, uh, gee. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe because you, you, you get it periodically? I... <laughs> oh, right. Once a month. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yes, I don't know. <laughs> sweetie, I, I, I wish your mom was here for you. But you know what? You have a great dad. So you go easy on him. <laughs> because sometimes it is really hard for fathers to admit that their little girls are growing up. And he just, he loves you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just written all over him, the way he looks at you when he talks about you. You're his number one girl. Especially since Mom died. Yeah. You're all he's got. Hey. Hi. Is, uh, is everything okay? Yeah. Um, but Dad, Beth is really, really cool. <laughs> well, I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, for 
a guy who claims to be the new breed of Spalding, you certainly have an old guard sensibility when it comes to doing business. And you know, it's frighteningly similar to Alan's. Uh -huh. Hmm, like father, like son. No, that's not fair. Fair? You want fair? You should see how David looks at me now. Oh, okay. So this, this has, uh, this has nothing to do with Lewis Oil, does it? This is, this is about David Grant. You want to find a way to redeem yourself in his eyes for what you did to him? You must really care about him. Yeah, I do. Morning, David. Morning, Philip. How, How are you? Good, nice seeing you. Good to see you. All right. You never would have said that to my face. I don't appreciate being ambushed. Ambushed? You stood there and you listened to a totally private conversation and you said nothing. It was it was rude. Oh, come okay, on, it was rude. You're not mad because that was rude. You're mad because I finally saw you with your guard down. You staying in Springfield would be the best thing in the world for my mother. I don't know. Oh, please, Fletcher, I was there. I saw everything. Well, I may not have wanted to see everything. What do you mean? Well, it would be very easy to blame you for everything that happened to my mother, but I have to believe that your leaving Springfield just triggered something, a time bomb that was already there ticking. Trust me, I know. My mother and I, we share a gift for self-destruction when it comes to men. And with my mother, it, it was my father. She was going to run away with him. I know. Blake, do you know what it's like to have what you think is the perfect relationship and then it just, of course you do. So what the hell was it, huh? What was wrong? Didn't I love your mother enough? And wasn't Meg with her problems, wasn't she a joy, a blessing? I, I, I kept beating my head against that wall trying to figure that out. I just couldn't make sense out of that. Listen, if I knew why my mother acted the way she did, my life wouldn't be the mess it is now. But she's, she's getting better. She stopped drinking. That's, that was a very big part of this. And thanks to you, she's, she's going to get the help she needs. Blake, I just want to know one thing. I'll be honest. Do you think that Holly would have hurt those children if something had gone wrong. I have to believe that she would not have hurt them. But something inside of her would have risen up and stopped it from happening. Stop. This is your plane? You have a flight this afternoon? Blank. You are gonna leave my mother again? Trust me, there is not a single quality I have that you would want. Well, let's just examine this, Holly. You kidnap the children, I rescue them, and yet no one even acknowledges that. You go after half of Springfield, and the only people I've heard are Josh and Reva, and yet people are lining up outside your door to visit you, to offer their support. I mean, it's completely ironic. I mean, here this man, Alan Spaulding, has professed his undying love for me, and suddenly I have to prove myself to him before he'll marry me. I have to somehow get him to look at me with something other than doubt and suspicion. I need him to get to... I need him to look at me the way that people are looking at you, with love and forgiveness. Look at you like... like maybe you made a few simple mistakes. Can't help you. Don't be so sure, Holly. I've got a lot riding on trying to figure this out. Figuring what out? What your secret is. <clears throat> How do you do it? How do you get people to to want to do things for you to help you? The one person I would want to forgive me. The one I would want to be here. I sent away. Are you talking about your ex? Fletcher, yeah. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. I mean, I, I heard all about it. Everybody was talking about it. How he showed up at your hearing and, and poured his heart out to you? And you sent him away? Mm. Tell him it was a mistake. 
Tell him you didn't know what you were doing. Get, do anything you have to do to get him to stay, Holly. Because if you don't, as far as I'm concerned, you really are crazy. You mean my little Seuss? I don't believe it. It's a, it's a pretty big thing in a girl's life. Yeah. And, and it's none of my business, but I think maybe you should let her tell you in her own time. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm really glad that you were here for Beth. And I love the way that you handled the situation, which, by the looks of it, was brilliantly. You know, this is something that Connie and I never had a chance to talk about. But you really helped us out. I mean, especially Susan. You know, I, uh, I don't know how I'm ever going to return the favor. Well, uh, I can probably come up with something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be tough on her. I mean, she's, she's going through enough changes in her life right now. It's got to be scary. Yeah, scary, uh, confusing, embarrassing. That pretty much sums up puberty for me. Look, I, I know you're trying to ease the tension in this situation, but uh, I, I should have been ready. You know, I, I should have had Susan prepared for this. I guess I always could have asked Mrs. McDonald. I mean, she probably would have known what Mrs. to say. Mrs. McDonald? Yeah, she was the health teacher in Susan's old school. Oh, come on. I think that given half a chance, parents do just fine with this topic. Oh, please. Even stumbling fathers? I, I don't no, know about no, that. but fathers that care like you do. You love Susan so much, and she knows that. And that's all that matters. You know, I guess I'm just not ready to face the fact that my baby's growing up. Well, guess what? I have a feeling that she understands that, too. You are a total genius. What are you talking about? Well, whatever you did to get my mom to start talking to you really worked. I mean, your dad couldn't even keep his eyes off of you guys. And anyway, now my mom and your dad are over there together, just like we planned, right? Wrong. What do you mean? It wasn't some trick, Lizzie. It looked like you two were having a pretty serious conversation. So what were you two talking about? Nothing. Didn't look like nothing. Look, it was nothing, okay? Let's just drop it. My mom's never gonna like you as much as she likes me, Susan, so don't even try. Uh, do you think that's what I want? Well, it kind of looks like that. Could you take me? No, that's not what I want, Lizzie. And to tell you the truth, I wish it was my mom I was speaking to. Your mom? Harley. I wish it had been Harley. you in the poetry chat room and I pray you'll open your email soon to read this. Vanessa, you've got to give me a chance to explain that we missed each other at the towers. We can straighten this mess out. I know we can, but it's up to you now. If you come home, I'll never let you leave again. I need to tell you how much I love you. My God. Honey. Honey. Sweetie pie. Come on. Come on. We're getting out of here. We're going home. It was all a big mistake and your daddy loves us and we're gonna go home and see him. Yes, we are. Let me 
ask you something. What? Would it have been so tough for you to tell me what was going on? That you were trying to do something right for the Lewises? That you were trying to do something good? You know, I'm sorry to bust your inflated ego, but this was not about you. Oh, come on, Vicky. I was standing right here. Are you going to tell me that I didn't hear you say that you care about me? About what I think? David, I don't want to have this conversation oh, right now. What? Being honest is a sign of weakness, Vicky? It's not that easy for me, David. I just said more to Philip than I should have. Just, you know what, you, you don't understand. No, I think I do. No, David, you don't. You don't give ground in this family. You don't make excuses in this family, and you certainly don't show any signs of weakness. It's eat or be eaten. No, it, it doesn't have to be like that. This is who I am. It's a part of me, and that's not just gonna up and go away. This is the package. Well, it's not what I want in a woman. I mean, between your all-consuming ambition, your manipulations, you're, you're everything I don't want. But I'm just so damn attracted to you. I mean, every, every time I see you, all of my judgment goes right out the window. Well, you're not exactly what I want in a man either. But you make me feel things I don't... I don't want to feel. Well, maybe we should just sleep together to get all this sexual tension out of our systems. Nice try. All right, um, I've got another idea. I'm all ears. We'll just start over with a clean slate. A clean slate? Yeah. We'll spend more time together, see if there's more to this than just a physical attraction. I mean, maybe we'll find out that we're wrong for each other. Maybe we'll find out we don't like each other at all. We can always hope. You were leaving all along. Look, Blake, I don't want to you upset know all anybody. You this talk about, oh, is it good or is it bad if I stay in Springfield for my mother? That's just a but. That's a big crock. You had your mind made up the whole time. I can't believe this. You know, Fletcher, I thought you were the bad guy before. When you left town with Meg, not only did you take my mother's daughter, you took my little sister, and you took her away from a lot of people who love her. But this, this is so, this is cruel. You are dangling hope in front of my mother. I mean, maybe she could see her little baby again, and you're just going to yank it away from her just like that. You know what it's going to do to her? It's going to kill her. It's it's gonna kill her, it's gonna break her. Blake, Why the hell did you come back here in the first place? Me, I don't watch the hell should I listen to you? You don't give a damn about Ollie. You don't know how wrong you are. But I think it's right that Fletcher goes away. Why do you say that? Because I don't deserve. I've made so many mistakes. I've done so many things wrong. And what about the one, one thing you've done right? The one precious thing in the center of everything you ever did? Your daughter. Oh, my Meg. That's right, Holly, Meg. God. I totally understood how someone could go off over something like that. You did? Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got all your friends rallying for you now, but before that, all the folk of Springfield, when they were shaking their heads trying to figure out how you could have done all those things. I knew. I completely understood. I know what it feels like to lose a child. It feels like just... I don't know, it feels like you've had life torn out of you. I know what it feels like to want to have a child knowing that you can never conceive again. And you have that, Holly. You have a child. So just forget about all the things you've done wrong. Forget about what everybody else thinks. Just remember what it felt like to look in your little girl's eyes. To hold her in your arms. That's what's important. And you're just going to throw that away? She meant everything to me. God, I, I know. So call Fletcher Holly. Tell him to stay. 
do it. I don't know what to say to him now. Oh, besides, they don't let me use a telephone. I'll make the call for you. You would? I'll call him up. I'll tell him you want to see him. I'm sure you can figure out what to say once he gets here. something too hastily hastily yes sending Fletcher away like I did you know, Fletcher um, he was so good at that hearing I he was so good to me Mom, and I just sent him away I made him go away I need to talk to darling you. that's not what I want that's what I wanted to talk to you about mom I, I have to prepare you prepare me Fletcher He's leaving. He's on his way out of town. I'm sorry. Hey, you two. Uh, Harley. Hi, Harley. Hi, Cassie. Is Tammy with you? No, just RJ. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is such a surprise. Didn't Susan tell you we were gonna come here and eat lunch before we went shopping? Oh, that's right. She mentioned it, but I figured you guys would have maxed out a few credit cards by now. Yes, but we we got sidelined. Oh? Yeah, um, Harley, I, I need to talk to you about something. Sure, honey. What is it? I I'm really glad you're here. Me too. What's wrong? I just need to talk to you about something, but it's private. Okay. Okay. Hey. 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 <laughs> so. So what? First dinner, now lunch. Hello. Oh, yes, I know. I know how to count, Cassie. Thank well, you. I'd say things were going pretty well for you guys, huh? Hey. Well, truth is, I wasn't here having lunch with Beth. She was here with Lizzie and Susan. I happened to run into them. Yeah. I... Don't you love coincidences? I did. Come on, listen. Let's just put it this way. Let's just say that. Beth's a very special lady, and I'm having a wonderful time getting to know her. Oh, Susan, I'm so sorry I wasn't here for you. Your first period. Such a big deal. I wish it hadn't worked out this way. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I just wish you hadn't been alone. I, I mean, with, with somebody that, that you don't know that well. You know, Beth was really great. Oh no, I'm I'm sure she was. No, really, she was she was so cool about it and I can't think of another person who would have handled it better. So um don't be guilty or anything, Harley. Okay, sweetie, let's go home to your daddy. He and I just made a terrible mistake, that's all. But he loves us, he wrote us and told us so, so let's go. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, it's cold out here, isn't it? You sure you're all bundled up? has been Guiding Light. Tonight 
on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather, Crisis Over Kosovo. We'll have complete coverage and analysis later.